the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series will return to the track in Italy in a few weeks' time at Francia Corta. There'll be plenty of racing action to keep fans young and old entertained. Oh, there was contact. They were side by side. He's been spun around, he's facing the wrong way! Welcome along to rounds three and four of the 2018 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. We're at Autodromo di Franciacorta in the northern part of Italy. The format for the weekend, there are two divisions in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, four races over the weekend, two from Elite One, which is for the pro drivers, and two for Elite Two, which is for young and for amateur drivers. As for Autodromo di Francia Corta Daniel Bernardo, well, it started to take shape in 2005. It's now been extended to a 2.5 kilometre course. And over the course of today, we're going to see two 25 lap races, one race from Elite One and one race from Elite Two. We've already had a couple of races. They took place at Valencia, and it was a double win for the reigning champion, the number 54 Cal Racing Chevrolet SS of Alan Day coming through to grab the victory in both of the races that we saw in Spain, which means that he comes to Italy leading the points from Fred Gavion at the wheel of his Toyota, who is jointly tied in second place with Anthony Kumpen, a double former champion. Well, it's a beautiful day here in Italy. You can see the thousands of spectators that are pouring onto the Autodromo di Francia Corta, soaking up this unique atmosphere and getting to meet all of the drivers where the fans can get really close to all of the action and everything else that goes on off circuit as well to keep the fans young and old all entertained in what is going to be, I'm sure, a great weekend of racing here. The second year on the trot that we've been at Autodromo di Francia Corta and with so much for the fans to do as well as all the on-track action there's lots to keep them busy off circuit as well double former champion Luca Lazar is going to take us around a lap of the circuit which has had some changes since we we're here 12 months ago hello fans this is Luca Lazar the driver from Mavi Michu Motors Chevrolet and uh, number 33 you are in Francia Corta in turn one you use curb inside and outside the car is a, a little bit uh, uh, with uh, oversteer, so I use again curbs outside, inside, turn four with the second gear. So you use the track limit, it was uh, very delicate, but the car stay on track. And uh, you arrive on the new chicane, very exciting turn. And the first hairpin with the first gear, okay, the car is in front of me, but I overtake him inside. First, second gear on the quick corner, to the right turn, it's quick. I touch the apex, the car moves. Okay, over steer, touch the curb. I stay on the curb. Second gear again for the back stretch. Second gear, third gear. I breathe a normally on the car. For the second airpin, second gear. I take the control of the car, stay inside, totally inside, and for the last turn, second gear, use the curb, and it's a very good lap. So we will see tomorrow if uh, we work very well. In qualifying, it was the reigning champion and double race winner at Valencia, Alan Day, that managed to put his number 54 Cal Racing Chevrolet onto pole position. But lining up alongside him would be Loris Heisemans at the wheel of his Hendrix Motorsport Ford Mustang, hoping to bounce back after a difficult weekend in Spain. The second row of the grid, two experienced drivers, the number 91 Brax Racing Chevrolet of Mark Goosens. He won the final round of the 2017 championship in Zolder, would line up alongside a double former runner-up in this championship, the RD competition Toyota Camry of Fred Gabion who's never won in Italy and wanted to put that right. 
the third row of the grid would see number 24, Anthony Kumpert, twice a champion lineup alongside number 33, Luca Lassar, another double former champion, and Wilfried Busena and Giammarco Urkeli would line up on the next of the rows. So the car's coming round, ready to take the start for the first 25 lap race of the weekend for the Elite One drivers. Elite Two will take to the circuit later on, and in two lines, two by two, up towards the start gantry they'll go. In the yellow car of Alan Day gets a great start by the look of things and is already ahead of Loris Heisemans, who is side by side with Mark Goosens. And as they turn up towards turn number one, Mark Goosens sneaks through into second place. But Loris Heisemans at the wheel of the Hendrix Motorsport Ford is trying to go around the outside. That's not quite going to work. The first three corners here are all right handers. There's a spin further back for Justin Kuntz by the look of things. He rotates the car, but thankfully is out of harm's way as far as everybody else is concerned. And as they sprint their way on the straight, it is Alan Day that leads the race in the early stages. You can see he's already opened up a bit of a gap as he snatches the brakes heading up towards turn number 11 between himself and the Brax Racing Chevrolet of Mark Goosens, who's there in second position. Over the start finish line now come. You can see cars queuing up for third place. It's Loris Heisemans that's still there in third place, the leading Ford that we've got on the circuit. And here is further down through the order. That is number 18, Bobby Labonte, who's got his hands rather full, to say the least. He's got Dario Carzo right behind him, and just ahead of him, by the look of things, is Mauro Trioni, the Swiss driver at the wheel of the Blue Art number 31 car. And Bobby Labonte, who has been nominated for the NASCAR Hall of Fame, is hoping for a good weekend here at, again, what for him is an unfamiliar circuit. Snatch breaks from Mauro Trioni as Bobby Labonte looks to try and get a run. Now it looks as though Dario Carzo is trying to return the favour at the wheel of the number eight car, the Racers motorsport car, and as they head in towards the braking area for turn number 11, can Dario Carzo squeeze up the inside? No, Bobby Labonte is trying to go around the outside of Mauro Trione. He needs to close the door to prevent the Racers motorsport number eight car of Dario Carzo squeezing his way through. Coming out of the pits with damage by the look of things. That's the number 56 car which has been in. Poor old Alex Jompy has clearly had an issue and has damage to the front left corner of his Cal Racing car. But Bobby Labonte is having a great little fight as he works his way through the order. At the front, Alan Day starting to sprint away now. And Mark Goosens has fallen away and dropped into the clutches of Loris Heisemans who will be hoping for a better weekend here than he had at Valencia, because for Loris, he was 30th in the first race when he was involved in an incident, and he was 24th in the second. But he really is looking to try and put things right this weekend. He sits there in third place at the moment, the white and black number three RDV competition Toyota in the hands of Fred Gavion sitting there in fourth place, but he's got double former champion Anthony Kumpen right behind him. Out of turn number 10, down the straight, you can see already the yellow Chevrolet off race leader, Alan Day, starting to get ever more distant from Mark Goosens. A good fight going on further down through the order. Giammarco Urkeli under enormous pressure from the 2009-2010 champion, but Luca Lassar can't quite squeeze his way through at the wheel of the Mavi-supported Michi Motors prepared machine, so has to tuck himself behind. As into the gravel has gone Alexander Graf, and that's going to bring out a full course caution here at Autodroma di Francia Corta. So with the caution done and dusted, we get things back underway once more. The green flag waves, and again, it's another great start from Alan Day as we ride on board with Giammarco Urkeli. Loris Heisman's ahead and to his right. Fred Gabion to his left, a little bit of nudging between the pair of them, but looks as though Giammarco Urkeli has hung on to fifth position. He's got Fred Gabion, the Frenchman, right ahead of him as they turn their way through turn number four. And of course, all of that advantage that Alan Day had has now been whittled down again as a result of the safety car period so they sprint their way up to this new section of the circuit through turns five turn six the tarmac change indicates that they then go back onto the old aspect of the circuit the order still remains the same alan day mark goosens loris heismans and then the white and black car of fred gabby on that's the top four but mark goosens is again under pressure from loris heismans as they were before the safety car and it's allowing alan day to pull away ever more into the lead of the race it was almost a clean sweep for alan day here last year he set fastest lap in race one which gave him pole position for race two and he won both of the races over the weekend the only thing he didn't do was head towards pole position for race number one and he has achieved that today so could alan day have an even better weekend than last year and clean up entirely here at autodroma di francia corta looks as though we're back under safety car once more and that's because francisco sini has had a problem the solaris motorsport car local team as well such a shame for them because francisco had gone very well and as we get the race back underway after the safety car period the green flag waves and again it's another great start from alan day loris heisman is going side by side with mark goosens as they turn up towards turn number one goosens on the outside line 
line. And as they head round through turn number one, there's a little bit of contact between the pair. Mark Goosens has been turned around. Loris Heisemans is involved. Other cars having to take to the grass in avoidance. But Mark Goosens is facing the wrong way. And Loris Heisemans has gone into the gravel trap and made contact with Malconia Brew by the look of things. The challenger champion from last year. So there's bits of car around the circuit. Mark Goosens keeps going. You can see Marconia Brew is in the gravel trap. Loris Heisemans is there. Other cars sort of leaving the scene as well. But it looks as though Mark Goosens has got a little bit of damage to the tail end of his car. And we are going back under safety car once more. So the safety car is back out there. There's two cars to recover from the gravel trap and not a great deal of time to do it in this race. So are we going to see a green-white checker finish or might we finish under safety car here at Autodromo di Francia Corta of Daniel Bernardo? It'd be an enormous shame if we did finish under safety car, but we've got a lot of racing to squeeze in over the course of this weekend. And as Alan Day heads up towards the start finish line behind the safety car, it looks like we may well and indeed have run out of time. Yet the checkered flag flies. So Alan Day claims his 13th victory of the season. The pole position that he took for this race also means he now matches the record number of pole positions that have been gained in this championship. He now shares that with Ander Villarino. So Alan Day claims the win. Fred Gabion is second ahead of Gianmarco Ercoli, who completes the podium. Anthony Kumpen is fourth. Mark Goosens did finish, but limped home to finish in 19th position. He will be rather disappointed with that, and will look to try and make amends in race two of the weekend. So Alan Day heads towards victory lane. It's another win for him. It's another win for the number 54 Cal Racing Chevrolet. And as he heads onto the roof of the car, Alan Day has, well, celebrations in hand. And those celebrations are playing the violin for everybody else. It's a great start to the weekend for the defending champion, and that's now three wins on the bounce for the 2017 champion. Yeah, we couldn't, we didn't have too much uh, action in the race. I managed to have a good race, manage the, the pace, having the pole position for tomorrow. They are amazing, they are amazing. I can't say too much. The car is amazing, it was, I'm driving an airplane. <laughs> what are you expecting tomorrow? Same as today. I don't know who starts second and third, but uh, yeah, same as today, having a good start, running away and having another win. So Alan Day holds the winner's trophy aloft in victory lane here at Francia Quarter and celebrates, as he said, yet another win. In the junior trophy, Giammarco Urkeli claimed the win and finished third overall from Toma Ferrando, who was second. And third was the number 11 car of Stinis Longin. As for the Challenger Trophy, well, Wilfried Bucena claimed the win. Second was Angelo Rigari, and Dario Carzo completed the Challenger Trophy podium. Great weekend here so far at Autodromo di Francia Corte Daniel Bernardo with so many other things to keep everybody entertained. We've got a mixture of all of the sights and the sounds and the smells of America and some death-defying stunt shows as well going on around the circuit. Well, we caught up with Bobby Labonte, 2000 Monster Energy NASCAR champion, and asked him to compare the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series to what we see in America. There was a lot of stuff that I saw around the racetrack, and uh, one thing that caught my eye was the go-kart track, and uh, I'm a big fan of go-kart racing at home, so the go-kart track here looks pretty phenomenal. They have a great uh, facility, and e even indoor facility, so, but I did see a lot of the food trucks and a lot of different things, so like all NASCAR Wheeling Euro Series events, they all have a lot of NASCAR American flair, so it was really fun. Well, it's great to hear from Bobby Labonte. He's enjoying himself and the smiles on the faces of all the rest of the drivers and the fans show as well as the fans can get up close and personal to the cars and the stars or their heroes of the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Well, the 400 brake horsepower, 1,200 kilogram machines in the hands of the elite two drivers are heading out onto the circuit on the build-up to their first race of the weekend. But let's hear some more from Bobby Labonte. There's a lot of similarity, similarities from what is in the U.S. to Europe. And uh, I think that the fans really like NASCAR racing in the U.S. when they watch it on TV or they go. So I think this is very similar to that. And they are, um, I think the fans are uh, receptive to it. And it's not, it's not their culture, but they, I think they like what they see. And so they're getting used to it. Uh, but it, it will take a while, but I can see excitement in the fans when I talk to them about NASCAR racing. And, and they seem to enjoy this type of racing here. 
The Circuit Ricardo Tormo in Spain. It was Wilfried Bucena that claimed victory in both of the races. The 2009 champion on the top of the podium once more. He leads coming into this weekend from Florian Venturi in second place. And at his home NASCAR Grand Prix, Nicola Ricitano sits there in third. In qualifying, Felipe Ribello bounced back after a difficult weekend in Spain to put his number 11 PK Car Sport Chevrolet on pole position. And it would be his teammate from PK Car Sport, Guillaume Dumouriez, the number 24 car that would line up alongside him. The second row of the grid would see the number 44 Cal Racing Chevrolet SS of the Luxemburger Gilles Linster line up on the second row. And for company, would be the first of the Fords in the field, the Knauf Racing number 73 car in the hands of Paul Guillaume, who'd finished just off the podium in the second of the two races at Circuit Ricardo Tormo. Florio Venturi would line up fifth quickest on the grid with the current championship leader, Wilfred Brucena, sixth quickest. Denny Zardo, who's gone well here in the past, sitting there in seventh. And eighth quickest will be Guillaume de Flandre as the cars are on the green flag warming up lap. We're about to get the Elite Two race underway here in Valencia. The green flag waves and they charge their way up towards turn one for the first time as we ride on board with the driver that started 18th on the grid, Pierre Luigi Veronese at the wheel of his Ford Mustang. All very tight as they work their way through the first of what are three right hand corners here on the 12 turn circuit. And Veronese is still on the outside by the look of things as they head round through turn number two. But it is Felipe Ribello that leads. Leads the race, his teammate Guillaume Dumouriez behind him in second place. Gilles Linster is still there in third place, but up to fourth from fifth on the grid is the go-fast racing Ford Mustang of Florian Venturi that's managed to go through it ahead of Paul Guillaud at the wheel of the number 73 Knauf racing Mustang that's now dropped down into fifth position. Now, the two teammates are going to, I would imagine, work together and try and build a gap. They can squabble later on, but what they don't want to do is squabble now and keep a queue of cars behind them. Felipe Rebello looking as though he's going to lead laps here. Now, the last time he led laps was at Venray in Holland in 2017, and he went on in Venray to win both of the races over the course of the weekend as Florian Venturi dives up the inside of Jill Linster and takes third place away. Great driving by Florian Venturi. Very, very late on the brakes was the Frenchman and goes through to take up the position and already is starting to pull away from Gilles Linster who is looking as though maybe the car is just struggling a little bit here it's very warm this weekend at Autodromo di Francia Corta and well tyre management comes into it as well so maybe in qualifying Gilles Linster just took a bit too much out of his tyres here's a great fight going on for the final few places inside the top 12 Nicolas Ricitano under pressure from Pedro Bonnet and also there as well is Matthias Dreza at the wheel of the number 56 Cal Racing Chevy those three absolutely tied together as they head over the start finish line about to start and Another lap of the 2.5 kilometer circuit here in Italy. And Mattia Dreza is just showing the nose of his car to Pedro Bonnet, but Pedro's having none of it. And there is a spin. That's another one of the Brax racing cars that's gone round. And that's the number 91 car of former world cycling champion Tom Boonen, who had a couple of top 12 finishes in Valencia, but a rotation is going to cost him dear in this race. He gets going, but he's going to drop a long, long way down through the order. Well, Nicolas Ricitano has just pulled away a little bit more from Pedro Bonnet, who's still got his hands full of Mattia Dreza, who dives up the inside at turn number six. There's contact between the pair of them. Pedro Bonnet gets spun round through 360 degrees and gets going, but Mattia Dreza, who is going for what was an ever-closing gap, is still facing the wrong way, and hopefully he'll get going, but that will cost him and might actually attract the attentions of the officials as well. Side by side round through turn number 10 as the Luxembourger Gilles Linster comes under pressure from the Belgian driver, which is Guillaume de Flandre, who's got the inside line for turn number 11, and he's short going to go through here in towards the braking area for turn number 11. You can see the nose of the car dip down and, well, not a great deal of defence was put up there by Gilles Linster, who I think is just struggling a little bit. It's a very physical circuit. It's a very warm day. You have to consider tyre management as well, and Gilles Linster just seems to maybe not have the car underneath him, ideally, as he would like at this stage. Felipe Rebello, though, is pulling away at this stage from Guillaume Dumoulin, his teammate. It's still a PK Car Sport 1-2, and there is a spin by the look of things, and that's the number 50 card of Dietrich Siasens that's had a spin coming out of turn eight in towards turn nine. And, well, he's got the car pointing in the right direction, but that is going to drop him a long, long way down through the order, and only now is he starting to get back up to speed once more in a pack of cars, all heading up towards turn number 11. And again, it's Gilles Linster who's under pressure, is it not yet? Diving through this time goes Julian Schell at the wheel of the number 29 car. The Pegasus Racing Chevrolet goes through, and he's now got Ulysses Delso looking to try and pick his pocket as well. 
Three cars up towards turn number 11. Simone Loretti, Francesco Parli, and Tom Bonin. There's contact between the front of Tom Bonin and the rear end of the race art car in the hands of the Swiss driver, Francesco Parli, who gets spun through 180 degrees. He will continue, but there's places lost for him as well. Our race leader's pulling away. Here's the number 32 Go Fast Racing Ford of Florian Venturi. Under pressure from the number two machine from Alex Caffey Racing in the hands of Denis Zardo. And with them both is Guillaume de Flandre here looking to try and carve his way up through the order. Another one of the drivers that didn't have a great weekend at Valencia. He was 14th in the first of the races. He was fifth in the second. But now Florian Venturi is having to try and hang on to his position. He's got right with him Denis Ardo. Florian Venturi second in the championship standings. Denis ardo has got the overlap this time, heading out of turn number nine, up to White's turn number ten. And is he going to be able to squeeze his way through? He's got the inside line. Is he going to be brave enough on the brakes? Yes, is the answer. So Denis Ardo goes through, but Florian Venturi's trying to brave it out around the outside as well. All the way around the outside at 11. Gives him the inside for 12, and he's gone back through to take the place back away once more. And Guillaume de Flandre has followed him through. So Denis Ardo looking to gain a place. He's actually lost one. And as they head on to the brakes and through what is turn number three now, up towards turn number four, they're slowing each other up, and that's allowing the next of the cars, which is Wilfried Busena, the current championship leader at the wheel of his Knauf Racing number 37 car, to close in all of the time. So it's four cars now, all busy squabbling away. Lock brakes from Florian Venturi again, which again allows the number 77 car to draw itself alongside in the hands of Guillaume de Flandre. He's fully alongside this time as they head up towards the braking area for turn number 11. And it looks so like Florian Venturi has switched back and has gone back through. Great driving. The door's open. Denis Zardo has a quick go as well. Side by side through turn 11. Switches back on the exit of turn number 12 and it looks as though Guillaume de Flandre who was at the head of that queue has now been shuffled back a couple of places great racing from them all they've been bumper to bumper we've had a little bit of rubbing but rubbing is racing this time lock breaks from Florian Venturi and that's opened the door for Denis Sardo to squeeze his way through again Florian Venturi gets a better run coming out of the corner and he's able to retake the place so just as he's lost the place instantly he's taken the opportunity to go back through once more great racing from these four drivers Florian Venturi under pressure from Denis Ardo, the number 77 car of Guillaume de Flandre not too far away, and poised ready to pick up the pieces if it all goes terribly wrong, is Wilfried Boussena, bumper to bumper, round through turn number seven, up towards the left-hand kink at turn number eight that brings them in towards turn number nine. The car that's just up the road from them is a back marker and needs to get out of the way. That's Tom Bonham, who is just ahead of them but it's off the lead lap at this stage, and this four-car battle is beginning to close in as they head round through turn number 10. This is where Florian Venturi seems to struggle to get the power down on the go-fast racing Ford Mustang, coming under an ever-increasing amount of pressure from the number two machine, which is Denis Sardo at the wheel of the Alex Caffey Racing Toyota, but he's left the door open, and Guillaume de Flandre is trying to squeeze his way up the inside. They're side-by-side, round through turn number 11, still side-by-side, -side, round through turn number eight, and it looks like Denis Sardo has just kept his nose ahead. Great racing. Here's our race leader, Felipe Rebello, is looking good here. He's built a small advantage through the traffic between himself and Guillaume Dumery, his PK Car Sport teammate. And it does look as though Felipe Rebello is going to come through and claim his first victory since the ovals of Fenray Holland in 2017. And that is his first victory on a road course as well. Guillaume Dumery comes through and finishes in second place, making it a 1 2 for the team, with Guillaume de Flandre in third place ultimately, and Wilfried Boussena completing the top four. Well, what a race it was. Some great fights going on, but post-race there were some penalties issued, which meant that Florian Venturi was placed a lap down. And Denis Zardo also managed to incur a penalty as well. That won't worry Felipe Ribello, though, as he heads to victory lane for the first time since we were in Holland of 2017. And, of course, it's not just a win for him, it's a 1-2 for the PK Car Sports team. They are going to be very pleased indeed with the way the weekend has already started for them at Autodromo di Francia Corta. Wow, 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 great job. Wow. I feel very good, very happy. I want to thank the team, they did an amazing job. We had some, some troubles in the, in the practice, but it was all resolved for the best way possible. And I'm so happy about this win, extremely happy. So what are you expecting tomorrow? I'll just try to go for the win again. I'll try my best tomorrow. Enjoy the celebrations in victory lane. And for the third time in his NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series career, it's Felipe Rebello on the top step of the podium, joined by Guillaume Dumoulin. Well, and Florian Venturi, but a post-race penalty sees him drop down through the order. And third ultimately goes to Guillaume de Flandre.
in the Rookie Cup, Nicholas Rissitano took top honours at the wheel of the number eight car, but he was shadowed throughout the race by the number 90 machine in the hands of Pedro Burnett, who finished second. And third in the Rookie Cup went the way of Max Lancer, the number 41 car, the Ford Mustang from the club's motorsport. In the Legend Trophy, it was another win for the number 78 Brax racing car of Jerry DeVert. From nine, Simone Loretti. And completing the Legend Trophy podium was the number 33 car of Eric Quintal. For the Lady Trophy, it was number one, Carmen boyt who just claimed honours from number 54, which is Ariana Casoli. Well, that's all for the moment from Autodroma di Francia Corte, Daniel Bonara. But don't go anywhere, because the second races of the weekend for Elite 1 and Elite 2 are coming up very shortly.